Jackie, continuing our conversations here in Melbourne, Victoria, you have been an attendee at a number of protests here in the city of Melbourne. I think around Australia we have all noticed the extent to which Melbourneites, Melbournians have been subjected to a much fiercer or harsher form of lockdown and other forms of restriction. I, wondered if, I was wondering if I could get your opinion on uh, your perspective on those protests, the general vibe there, how they may have differed from protests held in other cities. Bear in mind that often these protests were going on simultaneously across yeah. Australia, towns and cities. Victoria, our police, I don't want to swear on this, but they were utter pigs the way they treated uh, the people. So we, you had your standard police that were the, are in the fluoro vests, but there was definitely another harder line police, which we're unsure. We used to call them the foreign police or these stormtroopers, or they're all dressed in black. There's a, a definite difference of the two different police. So. We did notice that a lot of them had foreign accents. I was going to say, they sound more like an international exactly. police force rather than the local boys in blue. Exactly. So whether or not they were UN, whether they are CPP, I mean, this is, and, you know, this is my opinion, but Victoria seems to be the target for the smart city rollout. Daniel Andrews... Um, is in, in bed basically with the Chinese. The Chinese own a lot of what is down here. You've got to start looking into it. Australia as a whole, I don't know how much the Chinese own here, but I do know that I'm fairly certain that they own ports and airports. Own, whether they own, I've been told own, or whether they lease, have 100-year leases, on at least all four corners, or north, south, east and west with their military in there. They're coming and going into this country as they choose. I think you're describing what might be seen as a system or plan of attempting to infiltrate Australia. Bearing in mind, of course, Australia is not the only place where you hear about this type of thing occurring. Absolutely. I think that's the concern as well. I mean, Victoria is meant to be uh, running out of money or well, we've spent all our money, yet the construction that is going on here is astronomical. Roadworks everywhere. Tunnels they put in, that'll be another topic. 5G lights in everywhere, 5G towers everywhere. Where is all of this money coming from? Th this is the question. A and also the money where they can bribe um, or give the hospitals and nursing homes, as I mentioned earlier, incentives. To pay them thirty-five to forty thousand per death, they listed COVID nineteen, and then to give the families ten to fifteen thousand dollars as incentive, or I guess a bribe to be happy for their loved one to have COVID on the death certificate. You've also then got to look at the government are offering people two thousand dollars a week if they need to take a week off to go and get a COVID test. We'll pay you two thousand dollars. The bribery and the setup for this—where is all of this money coming from? Is it is the I, IMO, the IMOF, I think it is, or the IMF, the International Monetary Fund? Where does that money come from? Is that CPP? Is that UN? Is the CPP? Behind the UN, you've got to start asking all of these questions. Australians, we've got to wake up, we've got to start asking questions. Where's the money coming from? Where's all our money in Australia going to? That, that's another entire topic, but a lot of our construction companies here in Victoria have folded or consolidated. John Holland is one that is winning a lot of projects, and interesting enough, John Holland was bought out by the CPP. The Chinese now own John Holland. But they did retain a lot of the CEOs um, and main directors of that company, just to give the impression that it is still owned by Australians. We do, we do have a, a big concern here with China, and I think, well, the CPP, 
and perhaps just with Daniel Andrews' connections and selling us out. This is why Victoria seems to have been taken over. We've been treated like a communist country down here. I, I think I should point out to some of the listeners and viewers, particularly those overseas, Dan Andrews, Daniel Andrews, he is the Premier of the state of Victoria here in Australia. Uh, what in America would be known as a state governor, we call a Premier. So Dan Andrews is the Premier of Victoria and he's also had a rather nasty, almost freak accident, I suppose you could say. Some of us feel this may be used as a way to elbow him out of his political career. He's become very unpopular due to the way he has handled COVID, mm. due to the way he has handled or treated the population here in Melbourne and Victoria. So this is just, just a bit of background. Look, the guy's an absolute criminal. What he has done to us here in Victoria, not only did we have all these unjust lockdowns, he put us under curfew. The man is a liar. They tried to lock us in our houses. We weren't allowed out in between... 8 p.m. at night and 5 a.m. in the morning. This is absolutely ridiculous. He tried to blame the chief health medical officer. It was for health reasons. He tried to say that it was so the police could keep a check on people. Both the chief commissioner and the chief health officer said, no, it wasn't anything to do with us. Then Daniel Andrews decided in order to be answerable to the people, he was going to do an inquiry, run an inquiry on himself an inquiry where he didn't have to provide any evidence, where he did, if he, uh, if he lied, there was, um, there was no comeback. Basically, he wasn't accountable for anything. So he held an inquiry on himself, and I think there are about 10 of his um, Labor members there with him on the inquiry, and every single one of them throughout that inquiry just said, oh, I don't know, I can't remember. That's what the inquiry was. It was a shame. And the man has continually said, I'm accountable. I'm accountable for what's, what's gone on with Victoria. We think Daniel Andrews may have been pushed down the bloody stairs and it is absolutely a way for him to escape. What, what exactly was the nature of the accident he had? I do have a bit of information about it, but apparently he was at a social gathering. He slipped and fell down some stairs. The injuries that he sustained, from what I understand, were quite severe, to the extent that some people are saying these injuries are not consistent with a person who simply... Exactly. We live in a world of lies. We live in a world where who knows what the truth is, but that's, what, uh, that's the word going around, is that he was at a social event. He was... Pl this, is the, this is the thing that uh, doesn't make sense either. If he was blind drunk and he fell down the stairs, when, when you're drunk or intoxicated, you're, you're a lot more, um, I guess, relaxed is the word I'm looking for. So because you don't tense, you don't uh, cause your body as much damage. So word does have it that this alleged fall down the stairs, the injuries that he sustained were, I guess, comparable with someone who has had a major bike accident. Who knows what's going on? Daniel Andrews is um, AWOL. He's missing in action. We don't know where he's gone. He's just mysteriously disappeared. So he hasn't been as prominent in media. The daily no. uh, press conferences, the media reports, <sighs> standing in front of the cameras. Well, no one's heard or seen of him since this alleged fall, if it even occurred. Maybe he's just been whipped away to an island in China. Well, you mentioned that uh, he tried to pass the buck by referencing or bringing into the equation other people who were driving this agenda. They've denied that level of involvement that he claims they've had. Well, that was regarding the curfews. Okay. When he put the curfews in, he gave the reason for the curfews that it was, you know, for the safety of the people. And another reason he gave was that it was so the police would have a, a better oversight, I suppose, on what people were doing. But both the Chief Commissioner said, no, we didn't ask for curfews, not at all. And, the, and Brett Sutton said the same thing, no, I didn't, I didn't suggest that at all. The man's blatantly lied throughout this whole thing. Quarantine is for sick people. 
Quarantine has only ever been for sick people in the history, in, in our history, no in history. You do not quarantine healthy people. Obviously. It's control. So they, they have no contagion. There's nothing contagious there that they could spread, but they're being quarantined. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, quarantine has only ever been used for someone who has a deadly contagious disease. Now, you can see at the beginning when this all started allegedly in Wuhan and the World Health Organization put out these, um, I guess, proposed uh, schedules of what could happen, or how many deaths, etc. That never occurred and it was obvious that these um, projected figures of death rates according to, to what they were saying was not going to happen. We were nowhere near it. So for the hundreds of thousands of perhaps projected millions of people that were to die, that never, never occurred. And you could see that that wasn't happening within the first couple of months of this lockdown.